Thank you for staying for the news. And our first story, the resilience of Lake Busomche, the biggest natural lake in West Africa, is at risk of climate change and other human activities, according to a research by scientists from the University of Energy and Natural Resources. Based on a 1986 baseline study, the research discovered a sharp decline in water levels, reduction in size of the lake, and decline in fish population. Bohemian Terrier reports that residents along the lake are worried about the findings of the researchers and want immediate action to save the lake. Believed to have been formed by a falling meteorite, Lake Bosomchim measures about 8 kilometers in diameter, covering a surface area of about 52 kilometers. The lake has since 1.2 million years ago seen its depth decrease from 800 meters to 78 meters maximum currently with a surface area reduced from 52 kilometers in 1986 to 46 kilometers in 2020. Fish stock has over the years reduced resulting in few catches for communities along the lake whose mainstay is fishing. The development has forced many residents to divert to crop farming, which involves clearing the lake's forest cover. The use of weedicides and pesticides also pollute the lake's environs. 77-year-old Patrick Elliot Ofosu is one of the worried residents seeking answers to the warming and shrinking of Lake Bosomji. Some years back, about 25 years ago, the whole of this area was part of the lake. So, as we see it yourself, the lake is going back, it's receding. This used to be the landing area for bulls plowing on the Lake Bosom Chain. But with time, the water has receded, leaving this natural land in between the landing area and the lake. Sediments, including organic matter and silt associated with human activities and erosion, are said to have built up underneath the biggest natural lake in West Africa. Dubbed building resilience of Lake Bosomche to climate change, scientists from the University of Energy and Natural Resources, in partnership with their overseas counterparts from three institutions, are seeking to build the lake's resilience. We don't know the current and the future consequences of this for the people and also for the lake itself as a biosphere reserve. So that is the reason why Relab came in to understand to what extent climate is having an impact on the lake and the lives of the people and how the people are also responding to the changes and what are the consequences of that response. The researchers discovered the size of the lake is shrinking with the surface area decreasing from 52 kilometers square to 47.17 kilometers square. There has also been unprecedented decline in the water levels, fish catch and forest cover of the lake as a result of human activities since 1986 of harmful agricultural inputs by farmers in their quest to feed their families has been identified as one of the negative practices impacting on Lake Bosomche. Dr. Peter Sanfo is project coordinator. From what we have gathered so far, we know that the lake is drying up and it's mainly because of climate change. From 2005, we have seen that there's a rapid loss of, of water or a rapid recession of the water mark. From the shoreline to the water mm. mark, there's been some kind of 35 meter shrinking of the lake. So it is real that the lake is shrinking. We have found that indeed the climate is having an effect. Mm. Uh, the lake uh, is not behaving the way that I used to, used to, to do in the past. Uh, fish catches have been going down. The people's livelihoods have been affected and their agricultural activities have intensified as a result of their quest to support their livelihoods from farming. Dr. Sanfo says there could be dire consequences if no action is taken. The team continues to research the impact human activities and climate change could have on the lake as both closed and open forest cover of Lake Bosomche are targeted.
our responsibility is to conduct the research and generate the data and to engage, transfer this data to the policy makers who have to then incorporate that data into action plans. Environmentalists are recommending pragmatic measures to be put in place to arrest the current state of Lake Bosomitri to preserve the integrity of the lake so that the unborn generation can also experience the natural state of Lake Bosomitri left behind by forefathers. The whole of this place was waterlogged some years back. But look at the speed of receding. So something must be done. From Lake Bosomche, my name is Ohim Interior for Joy News. Well, in our next story, traders at the racecourse market in the Ashanti region are worried about the increasing armed attacks in recent times. They say these robbers break into their shops and ransack their wares on a daily basis. They want the authorities to come to their aid with adequate security. The market woman at the racecourse market laments the poor security and the trauma of coming under armed attacks. The robbers are really troubling us. Just this week, we were attacked. Hajia, who sells herbal plant products, says one trader had her shop broken into by the robbers on Monday. Our colleague is currently at the hospital. They stole from her and attacked her. The traders also observed a deliberate act of defecating around their trading space on a regular basis. The robbers also defecate here after stealing from us. Some commercial drivers operating at the racecourse market are unhappy with the poor sanitation in the area despite the daily fee charged to them for sanitation services. According to them, ever since they moved from Kejetia to the racecourse yard, authorities have neglected their needs. Chairman of Manson Quanta Drivers Group at Racecourse Market, Nana Poku says the authorities need to justify the daily sanitation fees collected from the drivers. We are really suffering here. Sanitation is really a problem. You always find filth around the lorry station. What I told you, the authorities use the money charged for. Now, the acting dean of the School of Nursing and Midwifery at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has observed limited higher education for nursing professionals in Ghana. Professor Veronica Millicent to Jomeku believes this situation is hampering the country's quality healthcare delivery. There is more in this report. School. Professor Veronica Millicent Zumeku expressed that the school is going to run some new programs in the new academic year. She observed that higher education for nurses and midwives in the country is very so, limited. Um, as a school of nursing and midwifery, um, we have been a department of nursing for 20, 20 years. During this period, we have introduced new programs like um, BSc Midwifery, BSc Critical Care, BSc Public Health Nursing, and then um, postgraduate programs in nursing. Now we are looking forward to starting a, um, an MPhil program in midwifery, um, MPhil, a PhD in midwifery, and then a PhD in nursing. As you heard earlier on, nursing and midwifery education started only in the um, University of Ghana and it took a long time for KNUSC, it's only 20 years ago that KNUSC came on board. And so that means that um, higher education in nursing, you know, the opportunities for higher education in nursing have been very limited. And so in the same vein, attracting 
faculty with higher degrees have been a very big, big challenge since um, until recently the a master's in nursing or midwifery was not available in country. And so anybody who attained it had to travel outside the country for it. Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Professor Lee Dia Aziato, encouraged the school to equip students with the needed skill to boost the country's healthcare delivery. Please make every effort to ensure that the student you are graduating is a safe nurse, a safe midwife. I beg you. All of us can be the patients one day, and that person you graduated who was not skilled will be the one taking care of you. She also emphasized the need for the nurses to be taught how to be empathetic. The nurse can be very, very intelligent. Concepts, rational, the knowledge, excellent. Even their skill is top notch. But within our context, if the way you communicate, the way you approach the care in totality, holistically, doesn't meet the emotional aspects, please, for me, it's so zero. So our training of nurses and midwives in the country, across the university, not only clear agency, must remember that the care concept is a human discipline. And a human, apart from the technical, we also need to handle the emotional aspects, the psychological aspects. In our next story, the Executive Secretary of the Public uh, Regulatory Commission, Dr. Ishmael Aka, says his outfit is working closely with utility companies to improve their performance in order to satisfy their customers. Now, speaking in WA after an engagement with students of Nusrat Jahan Ahmadiyya College of Education, it is closed that the Ghana Utility Performance Index, which was introduced by the PURC, has brought out the best in the companies. Rafiq Salam now reports. The past few months, the Public Regulatory Commission, PURC, has been engaging stakeholders on the need to conserve energy and also for them to know their rights and responsibilities. Their focus now is on testing students where they educate them on the tariff process, understand the efficiency mechanisms and be ambassadors at their various homes to educate the people around them on the work of the PURC. Executive Secretary of the PURC, Dr. Ismail Aka, in an interview with the media after an engagement with students of the Nasr Jan Amade College of Education noted that the engagement will also give students the opportunity to ask questions and recommendations in order for them to have an efficient water and electricity sector. Yes, we believe that uh, students, some students are in the rented accommodation, they pay their own electricity bills. Some of them are in dormitories where the bills are charged on them as part of their fees. So they are very important stakeholders. Again, we are also, these are college of education students. We see that very soon they are going into the world to be teachers. So if we educate them, chances are that they can also educate others and spread the world. So this is why PURC is focusing on educating students this year. However, we are also working with workers, with market women and other groups so that together we all understand what we do as a regulator. And even if you have a complaint, the processes you can go through to reach us. Dr. Ismail Aka expressed satisfaction over the engagement held so far with the tested institutions pressing the students for the questions posed. So uh, the good thing is that they are asking very intelligent questions, one on the, how the tariff is even approved, uh, whether it would ever come down or to go up, and uh, some of these efficiency mechanisms. Some of the concerns also border on quality of service, that why should I pay, but uh, maybe if the light is going off, they don't tell me, and so many other things. Well, that's how we cap off the news uh, this morning. Uh, up next, we'll serve you the news review.